Siemens' new Accelerate Mechanical Splice Termination Kit incorporates an exclusive dual-process activation tool which dramatically reduces termination time. The toolkit is capable of terminating both SC and LC style connectors without any time-consuming changeover. Before terminating, verify that all required tools are available. Prepare the activation tool by releasing and opening the crimp handle. Move the handle release latch away from the handle to unlock. This handle can also be released by fully depressing and the handle will unlock and release automatically. Also open the connect the securing lever as shown here. The guide slot on the activation tool should be kept as clean as possible to prevent debris from transferring onto the fiber end face. The Accelerate mechanical connectors are offered in both single mode and multi mode LC and SC versions. Prepare the connector for loading into the activation tool by removing the rubber grommet covering the lead in tube on the back of the connector. Do not remove the front protective cap or replace with an alternate style cap as this cap is sized specifically for proper operation of the Accelerate crimp tool. Also note that these caps should not be reused after one termination cycle since the caps can deform slightly with each cycle of the Accelerate tool and will result in increasingly higher attenuation. Insert the connector into the slot provided in the tool such that the knurled section of the metal shaft rests on the slot opening in line with the connector securing lever. It may help to insert the connector by gripping the front cap on the SC style connector because of the play in the housing. This will ensure the shaft is fully inserted. The orientation of the latch or connector body is irrelevant. This can be in any rotation outside the slot opening. Rotate the securing lever to hold the connector in place. If aligned properly, the lever will contact the knurled section of the metal shaft. Prepare the cleaver by sliding the fiber guide to the left. Depress the locking button and slide the cleave blade assembly back as far as it will go, then rotate the magnetic clamp lever to the open position. Inspect the clamp area for any end piece of fiber from your previous cleave. If present, remove the end piece and place on a loop of tape for proper disposal. The cleaver should be periodically cleaned to prevent debris from getting transferred onto the fiber end face. The blade assembly can be lifted then rotated 90 degrees to gain easier access when cleaning. While paying careful attention to the sharp blade, clean on and around both clamping pads including the pads on the top of the clamp lever. The blade can also be cleaned carefully as necessary. Be very careful when rotating the blade assembly as this will expose the sharp blade. Avoid over rotating the blade assembly beyond 90 degrees as this may cause damage to the blade if allowed to contact the leading right edge of the tool base. Over rotation may also result in the lubrication on the bottom of the blade assembly to inadvertently transfer onto the clamping pad and subsequently contaminate the bare fiber during the cleaving process. Locate the template card provided and follow the guide for the specific connector being terminated. The card depicts proper strip length for two different connector types. With the end of the fiber placed even with the end point shown on the template card, mark the strip length as shown. Also place the additional reference line mark indicated to be used as a visual aid during the insertion step. Don't forget to install the boot by sliding the narrow end first down the fiber until it is out of the way. Next remove the section of buffer coating up to the first mark using a buffer stripper. To avoid breaking the fiber, remove the buffer in several small sections. Note that not all buffered fibers are manufactured equally and some buffer coatings can actually be removed safely in one piece but in any case consistent results can be obtained by removing in smaller portions. Carefully inspect each fiber after stripping to verify the protective coating is also removed. Notice the remnants of the protective coating on these fiber strands. 
sometimes mistaken to be the fiber cladding, this coating must be completely removed or the fibers will not fit in the connector. Clean the bare fiber with two passes of an alcohol wipe, being careful not to touch the fiber after it is cleaned. Also be careful not to remove the reference mark. Ensure the fiber guide is slid to its leftmost position, then lay the prepared fiber onto the guide with the edge of the buffer even with the 8mm mark. While holding the fiber in place, gently slide the guide and fiber as far as it will go into the cleave blade area. Be sure the fiber is straight and level so that it passes unobstructed through the cleave area opening. The end of the fiber should appear out the other side as perpendicular as possible with the blade assembly. Swing the magnetic clamp lever closed to secure the fiber perpendicular with the cleave blade. Then slide the blade assembly forward into its locked position to cleave the fiber. Keep fingers away from this button which will pop up during this step. Now lift the clamp lever and carefully remove the freshly cleaved fiber without contaminating the end face. The fiber is now ready for insertion into the connector. Remember to properly dispose the fiber stub. It is not necessary or recommended to rewipe the fiber after cleaving as this technique could leave debris deposits on the end face where it is difficult to clean precisely. Carefully lay the fiber onto the fiber guide channel with the fiber end close to the lead-in tube of the connector. Avoid dragging the tip of the fiber along the guide slot to prevent contaminating the fiber end face. Remember to periodically clean out the guide slot to help prevent inadvertent contamination. Gently slide the fiber into the connector as straight as possible to avoid bumping the edge of the lead-in tube. Once inside the lead-in tube, the fiber should slide in smoothly. If you feel resistance prior to full insertion, do not force the fibers in. Adjust the position by rotating the fiber slightly, then try again. Use the reference line mark on the buffer to verify the fiber is fully inserted. Once you feel the fibers firmly stop against the internal fiber stub, check the location of the reference line mark. If fully inserted and measured correctly, the mark should be visible just before the entrance of the lead-in tube. Hold the fiber securely into the connector by placing gentle but consistent inward pressure, enough to form a slight bow in the fiber as shown here. While maintaining inward pressure, depress the tool handle as far as it will go to crimp the fiber into place. Remove the connector by opening the small securing lever and lifting the connector straight up and out of the tool. Finally slide the boot back up and gently press into place while holding the connector housing. Never pull on the fiber to engage the boot or while holding the terminated connector as this can cause a gap at the splice joint resulting in the excessive insertion loss. Although not required with the Siemens Accelerate connector, it is always good practice to clean the end face thoroughly just prior to connection. This is especially true if the factory installed protective cap was inadvertently removed at any point during the termination. An alcohol wipe followed by a clean, dry, lint-free wipe will ensure reliable results. A properly cleaned end face can make a significant difference in the performance of your system.